Hello, hello everybody, and welcome, welcome to today's session. And you can see uh, Ludmilla there. This is Nelly Deutsch speaking under Ludmilla's name. I'm going to be going into another computer soon, and you'll see my name. So, welcome, welcome to uh, Moodle MOOC 3. And this is uh, week one. We've had a few presentations, really exciting ones, uh, very different from anything that you have probably experienced. Just want to remind you, I'm going to put in the chat box how you can respond and reflect on each one of these presentations, including this one. So uh, this presentation is with Dr. Ludmila Smirnova. She's right here. All right, you can see. And um, we're going to get right to her set. Oops, I shouldn't have opened that. Uh, we'll get to your session. I think it's the last slide for some reason. Let's go back to the beginning. All right, so Ludmilla is going to be speaking. Uh, Ludmilla is a close friend and colleague. Um, I think it's going to number one. All right, and um, she teaches at uh, Mount St. Mary College. And she's been teaching for a number of years. She's an experienced online and face-to-face -face teacher. Actually, she's a blended learning teacher as well as a blended online uh, learning teacher where she uses only online uh, tools. She's very experienced and I think that she can offer us a lot. So I'm looking forward to uh, your feedback everyone and Ludmilla, I'm going to let you start. All right, thank you very much. If you see me, please uh, uh, give me a smiley face or thumbs up or just uh, say yes. All right. Thank you very much. If you hear me, please uh, uh, give me a smiley face or thumbs up or just uh, say yes in the chat so that we would. All right. Thank you, every mu uh, everyone. Anna, Harriet. Yes. Thank you. Ajiv. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, my topic today is learning to teach and collaborate with emergent technologies. And um, to be before I begin, I would like to say a few words. Uh, Nelly mentioned a few words, uh, a few things about me. But um, so I was born and uh, got my education back in Russia, and. I had my um, education. I studied with uh, learning English and German. And uh, when I graduated from the university, I first taught English and arts at school. And I was also vice principal of the school and uh, for extracurricular work. So I enjoyed working. And then uh, I was invited to teach at the university uh, where uh, I graduated from. And I uh, started teaching English uh, for a number of years. And then I was offered a PhD program. I invited to do my PhD in education and psychology. And uh, so I graduated, and when I graduated after graduation, I was uh, nominated and became dean of School of Foreign Languages, and I worked um, uh, as uh, dean of School of Foreign Languages. And I was traveling a lot, bringing students. Uh, in 2000, oh, in 1998, I was. Uh, so, uh, and uh, in 2000, oh, in 1998, I was. Invited to teach in the United States. And. and came back forever. So I was hired by, first I worked at Ramapur College and, and 
this is the Ramapo College. I was on Russian uh, Russian courses. I was and teaching then then I started using WebCC. And then I was hired by uh, I teach I know what methods of teaching and I was and then that's where I started using WebCT. And then I was hired by uh, Mount St. Mary College. And in 2007, uh, we, uh, well, we started looking for different management systems because WebCT was bought by Blackboard in 2005. And we started looking for uh, programs that would help us um, teach better online. So, and in 2007, we um, chose a Moodle, and at that point, I'm a Moodle for Teachers Together. And that, since then, I was participating in Moodle MOOC as facilitator, as moderator, and, um, and I also a Smartboard trainer. So I love technology, and la latest version of Smartboard is very intuitive. It's almost like iPad. So students can use um, use use it um, very well. Um, uh, Nelly, That's a, would yeah, you yeah, tell yeah, me yeah, that uh, transmitting video is? They suggested me to stop video. Um, and when I started teaching, uh, I immediately, um, and when I teach uh, online or I teach in person, but I use Moodle for um, engaging students in active learning, whether I um, offer them content or I engage them in collaboration. And it's very important to understand how people learn. So uh, I have a question for you. I have a guessing game. So I, I, would, I would like you to guess how, many, how much people remember when they hear a lecture. So right now you are in a way you are with me, but I try to interact with you. So how much people remember when they hear a lecture? So just write it down, percentage. How much people remember if, we, if they just hear a lecture? How much do so, you remember when they read? Ten, OK. How much do they remember when they read? When they all right, Harriet said 10%. Uh, reading, OK, reading. And how much when they see and hear? More than 50, read 20, all right. And when a teacher demonstrates and they engage students, how much do they remember? All right. And when they discuss together? All right. When they practice, and when they teach each other, how much would retain if they teach each other? Eighty percent, ninety percent. Harriet, you're on the ball. So the research shows, and I I prepared this slide for you. The research shows that when student when teach, students hear the lecture. It's only 5% they, they remember. When they read, it's 10%. Uh, here, 20%. If you practice, 30%. Watch moving pictures, 40%. Watch demonstration, 50 uh, Somebody wrote correctly. Uh, and then when they in, involved in the activity, 70%. And and uh, the latest research shows that when they teach each other, they learn the most. It's 95 percent. The the latest research shows. So it means. What does it mean for us teachers? What does it mean for us teachers? 
how 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 we should engage students in in learning in our classrooms what does it mean for us as teachers just type in some um, insights in in the chat box and I, I usually do this in the beginning and I do this guessing game and each time I expect okay so this year my students my new students would would guess right they, they would guess that the more engaged students the better students remember yes learning styles were never empirically proven I think what we learn may also uh, depend on our interest well yes it of course of course it depends uh, but uh, what I'm speaking I'm speaking about uh, our students how they learn and the teacher a good teacher uh, would uh, engage students in active learning uh, by uh, of course you do the best of what you can but we uh, engage students thinking about their abilities, their in intelligences, uh, and how they learn. So we um, they learn better when they are engaged in active learning where they participate actively right right so um, and of course this influences how we design our courses and um, I've been teaching uh, in person and online and each time I would um, work with the content that I teach and think how I can change it so that I would make students learn I would uh, collect information I will collect different um, best practices uh, and uh, I engage students in the reflection I, ref I engage students in sharing their information their learning and um, and also the latest the latest findings um, show that the current education is about curation when you can not only know how to find the information how to organize it but also how to share this information and how to engage others in in uh, active um, working and interacting with the content that uh, you um, share so curation is a very important thing so we um, and uh, another another question would be what is learning how in order to teach students well you have to know what learning is and here are this is a word all about learning and what it involves and what types of learning um, and learning exactly Nelly learning for what purpose are you learning just to know are you learning to uh, actively use it are you learning for uh, developing improving yourself so it's all uh, all are important uh, questions or you learn for exams exactly you just learn and memorize in order to forget in a couple of days yes yes uh, Glenka that's what we were discussing uh, a minute ago um, yes you missed the beginning um, so uh, and uh, so some people think that learning uh, learning is uh, a change of behavior um, the change must result from practice or experience it's behaviorist understanding of learning and learning occurs when there is a change in behavior behaviorists say so and if and behaviorists also state so if you cannot see the change in behavior then uh, cognitive you cannot see 
the change of ideas, insights of students. So, and they, that's why there was um, a interaction between, uh, between the schools. So there is uh, uh, other uh, theorists saying that acquisition of knowledge or skills through experience, study or being taught. So it's another way, and it's also this understanding in understanding of learning was in evolution, and this was the next trend. And uh, this is the latest um, understanding of uh, learning is learning is an active state, a process of searching, digging, questioning, connecting, thinking, imagining visualizing, trying and teaching, collecting, building, learning is unfinished, um, the latest, and that's what Nelly was saying, is, ne is, is learning finished. It's never finished because there is always something, there are new discoveries, and my task in my classes is to bring this notion to my students and understand that learning it never ends so you always have to be in constant search for learning um, and we as we have to also show to our students that we are learning we are constantly learning and we are learning about students we are learning about brain how brain functions and this helps us also improve our own teaching. So I, I like the conversation uh, on, on the chat. It's wonderful. So, and um, in understanding learning, uh, we look at different uh, theories that uh, rule uh, education today. It's behaviorist theory cognitive theory and social interactive uh, learning theories and um, that's why um, when my students come to my classes I engage them in all all of these uh, environments for students to learn uh, actively and um, there are of course ways and times when students need to learn about something that they never learned, uh, brief interactive discussions. And, um, and I always um, engage students, uh, and uh, I warn students that this class is not about direct instruction, it's about flip learning. I record lectures and I send them before class. They listen, they view, and then they come to class. We interact. I engage students in search. I engage students in uh, interaction within each other, between each other, and um, and though they're in class, they always give some uh, reflection on the discussion forum immediately. And when they listen to each other, they give feedback on their own learning. So that's what when I was describing my today's session, I said that I turn my classrooms into little uh, laboratories. So, uh, and there is a rule um, that a classroom should be designed 70, 20, and 10, explaining that 70% um, should be students should be active in learning, 20% uh, uh, they interact with each other and with the content. And 10 10% should be about giving students um, direct instruction. Um, so, um, and my uh, goal in my classes where I teach students how to teach is to um, make them, uh, not make them, like encourage them to understand learning. Uh, develop their content knowledge and pedagogical understanding um, how the process of learning occurs, how what motivation is, how it motivates students to to be active, 
uh, how to teach differently, not just direct instruction, how to use inquiry, how to use um, social interactive model. Uh, they also involved in emotional understanding. Emotional intelligence is very important. And I know Nelly, it's Nelly's favorite topic. And also that, uh, hello, Helena. I see Helena is here. So I'm glad always having you with us. Um, fundamentals of change. That change requires uh, some discomfort. Students do not like discomfort. And even now, uh, but lately I noticed that they, they students know stories about my classes. I, I use technology a lot. And when they come to class, they are petrified. Sometimes they're intimidated. And uh, I always tell them that they uh, are not going to teach the same way they were taught at school when they were students. School is different, and they have to be ready for change. And the change is about discomfort. So um, so these, these things I want students to take from my classes. And so what happens in the classroom 70-20-10 is that um, a lot of mentoring, coaching, facilitating occurs in the classroom. And uh, mentoring usually is about uh, engaging um, students, whether you are in college classroom uh, or in uh, school, uh, engaging students, showing them support, showing them um, friendship, uh, counsel, and reinforcement of their learning and their uh, confidence in knowing how to learn. And that's what happens in my classes. And if they are supported, coached, I, uh, I always provide my email, uh, my personal email, and my Skype, uh, and my uh, other social accounts where students can reach me and uh, ask questions and stay in touch with me. And especially in uh, online classes, it's very important. Um, so these are, um, before I start sharing what I do in my classes, um, I, I think it's very important to create a learning community in the classroom. And when I start classes, I start with the goals. I uh, share students my goals, um, and uh, and I, I during the first week of classes, whether it is in per in class face to face or it's online, I try to encourage students to build their relationships. Uh, we create class rules. We create. Uh, we design. I ask students to design uh, class rules. I don't give them my rules. I want them to suggest uh, rules or principles that everybody will follow uh, so that it will be their role. And this semester was interesting. I asked them to express rules, not just with statements, but find some images, videos, multimedia devices. And it was uh, some <laughs> graduate students came up with very funny um, videos, uh, the contrary, um, contrary uh, to class rules. And they, one of the students wrote, I don't want to be in this classroom where these guys are uh, setting up the rules. It was really funny. And some students used Pinterest. They found interesting rules, class rules of other teachers. It was, it was fascinating to follow. It was fascinating to. Uh, to see that what students uh, came up with. And uh, the main thing what I do during first class, uh, I uh, offer them an, um, a very interesting, uh, not, not very interesting, it's a practice exercise where uh, I ask them to uh, complete two online uh, surveys about their skills, about their goals. And um, I designed a uh, Google Doc, a Google document 
with this survey where I ask students to share what the skills they have in the beginning of the semester. They have to fill out a Microsoft Word um, document so that they would know in the uh, later on the course how to update copy. They have to fill out a Microsoft Word um, document so that they would know in the uh, later on the course how to attach a file. But what I'm doing through this, I give them a needs assessment and they have to fill out what skills they have in the beginning of the semester. What, how much they've grown through this also helps to set up goals. They are setting goals for themselves, not me, uh, forcing on them the, go the goals or co learning outcomes of the course. Uh, so, <clears throat> And the next step in setting goals is um, so the students usually, when they uh, fill out that needs assessment with pluses and minuses, what they what skills they have and they don't have, uh, they also write a little summary what their plans are, and these are uh, excerpts from student um, summaries that. Um, some students said, I'm very excited to learn the many different teaching methods and uses of technology in the classroom. I have limited understanding of many of the methods of teaching and I look forward to increasing them. Some students say, I feel intimidated now, uh, and uh, but I am confident that, that this course will give me a lot of uh, knowledge. So, um, and then I invite students, I invite students to introduce themselves digitally. And these are the tools that you see right now. You see the post on the forum. And I post forum, post on the forum. And I ask them to introduce themselves. And I offer them different tools in the beginning, uh, like Pinterest or Voki or Telegami. If you see here, it's an iPhone, uh, Telegami or Screencast-O-Matic or Visify uh, or um, different tools, those uh, Bitstrips or Glockster. And students, um, if there are, for example, just imagine there are 18 students, and I also uh, usually uh, trick them. I say this: the, I offer these tools, and the rule is first, first come, first served. Those who chose one of the tools, uh, the rest should choose something different. No duplicates in the in the insert on yourself. And what happens? Yeah, move more. Yes, this time. Uh, some of my students are you were using move notes, no. yes. So I give suggestions from the previous classes, but this year one of the students used move note, and I myself use move note and move note too. And I use move note for uh, introducing the course. Uh, I created slides about the course design, about uh, parts of the course, and I recorded. I welcome students to. Um, uh, to to the course and introduct uh, that introduction part of uh, to the course and this helps students to um, to to uh, to establish uh, interaction and during the first week there will be 356 posts uh, where students interact uh, how they liked they liked uh, the tool and how and then students come to class, it depends. So if it's, it's a face-to-face -face class, students come to class and they present. And that's 
that will be there. I usually, that's what I usually say. This is your first time when you teach in front of the whole classroom. So just keep in touch. So you have content. It's your About Me project. You have a tool that you have to teach how to use because you were teaching. You were the only one who used that tool. Uh, and you also have to use three parts of teaching, introduction, uh, development, and closure. So you have to think through, and this is, this is your chance to start learning how to teach, how to establish interaction with the classroom, eye contact, voice projection, and the audience, I also give them the tools how to give feedback. I ask my audience to give three pluses and a wish. Students. Uh, the audience who are students, they usually give them uh, um, three pluses um, what um, what they liked about the presentation, whether they like uh, the way they designed uh, the project, whether the way they presented, the way they chose uh, colors. And then they have to give one constructive suggestion where to improve. Or it's not exactly criticism. It's just the suggestion. If you choose, if you use that tool, how you would make it better. So it really helps students to establish this um, way of giving feedback. And in today's, in, in the United States now, is required. Students will uh, be completing EDTPA. It's a, a preparation for teaching uh, at, a, at a test. And one of the assignments, one of the tasks, aspects of the test is uh, students will have to submit the uh, feedback, how they provide feedback to their students on their assignments. And I think I really help my students to learn how to provide feedback, beginning with the positive and then give some suggestions how to improve. Um, so, and just imagine that so everybody in the class was doing only one, uh, one uh, tool to design their project with. But when the class is over, everybody learned uh, all the rest, and now they are equipped with 18 tools if there are 18 students in the class. So it's, it's really um, uh, interesting. Then I also create groups because students will be working in groups uh, and designing projects, and I want students to learn how to interact. And if it's online class, uh, I do it in the beginning of the class, and uh, it depends, Nelly. It depends on the um, on the semester. Sometimes it's 19. Sometimes it's uh, 25. Uh, sometimes it's 10. Uh, this semester I have classes uh, uh, 18 students and uh, 10 students and uh, 12 students. So, but last semester I had a class with four students. Uh, the enrollment is going down. So uh, when um, I assign students to groups, and I always want to create their interaction, closeness, and bonds, they create bonds. So I, uh, one of the requirements is to create, um, they, to come up with the name of, the, of their group and come up with a logo or motto for the group. Uh, and the, uh, there are requirements, so your name the name of the group should re reflect the chemistry of the group and uh, represent the personality of the group. So you, I, right here, you have some examples: um, students teaching students, uh, Mount Loyalist, uh, that was a group, or table. They have acronym. They came up with uh, acronym. Um, so it depends. So they, and it is also. They have to create uh, using either collage uh, tools or they use uh, this. I think it was use Google Docs, and students created this, um, and then they did the screenshot. 
and um, and then they come to class and they present it. So and it creates a, a, a personality, a chemistry of the group, and students uh, use it uh, use these uh, logos when they present other projects to the class, and everybody can identify group. Um, so students. Uh, the, and these are other uh, other um, projects where students present in groups. So that was a project. It was called Come In, a project where students had to create a, a, an acronym uh, for differentiated instruction using Come In. So because every time the teacher comes in the classroom, and magic happens. So, and each group was uh, were um, came up with different ways of. Um, some group came up with a rap, another group uh, came up with idea of a. They created a collage on, uh, on, and they were sharing. So it's um, it's a very um, interesting. Uh, that that's a rap. The students were doing a rap, um, creative project. Uh, this this group of uh, students they were participating in in the project uh, that was called Visual Project, and at first students learned how to um, design design and learn how to design company name, how to design commercials, uh, everything they learned first uh, themselves and before they went to the field work where they were. Implementing the um, and teaching students how to create movies online and creating companies, movie companies, and uh, it was uh, really impressive. So that it was in the spring last year, and students were designing commercials. They were collaborating together using uh, technology, emergent technology. Um, <clears throat> And uh, so they were using, uh, you will see, uh, they were using different tools to present. And then when they are in the field, they use these tools and uh, they use these ways of that they learn in my classroom, how to engage students in collaborative work, how to, um, how to reflect, reflect with images. And students also, before they created their movies using iMovie, using uh, their iPads, using uh, Movie Maker, or um, uh, Care Proof uh, program online, they were designing, uh, designing their uh, scenarios uh, on paper. So, and my students were teaching that. Um, uh, how to do that. Um, they also use Prezi. Uh, they love Prezi. And when they know about Prezi, they forget about uh, monotonous uh, PowerPoint presentation. And um, they um, board in uh, almost in every classroom there are smart boards. And my students are using smart boards. And we provide training for them. Uh, so here you see examples. Uh, unfortunately, extra normal um, requires to pay, and uh, no extra normal anymore available for students. Just, uh, but it was a great program. Um, it's if you can type, you can make movies. It was called. So students were creating. Um, it was a great way to to interact. But now there is a, there is a program. It's called Telegami, uh, Telegami uh, on iPhone, and you can use it in order to create a similar similar situation. So you can choose a background, you can choose characters, and using your iPhone, you record the voice and create a, a interactive um, avatar. And uh, students were using um, Movie Maker and posted it on um, on YouTube. That's uh, uh, that's what they were using, and they were presenting proudly 
presenting during, we call it movie night, though it was a day class, but we call it movie night as a as presentation, almost Oscar award. And uh, students, some students using extra normal, iMovie, and also voice thread is, was used. Um, during um, during uh, during uh, preparation of teaching students to teach social studies, I also uh, engage them in this activity. They have to read a book and create a, a book trailer. So they, when they themselves create a book trailer, then they can teach you, her, their students in their own classroom uh, do the same instead of just writing boring reports about what they read when they create a book trailer in order to create a book trailer you really have to know the plot you have to know the characters you have to know uh, where to stop and um uh, i see a lot of uh, interaction going i'm so happy to see that but i cannot read and speak uh, um and and um, so here, uh, these are uh, examples. And VoiceThread is one of the tools that students were using creating book trailers. And what is wonderful about uh, VoiceThread that they can engage others to to um, give give feedback on uh, on the um, book trailers. And this is this is an example of movie project, uh, Freedom Fighters, uh, about the American Revolution or the Road to Freedom Independence. These are uh, different ways of um, <clears throat> presenting the videos. And and uh, I also use students. Yes, book trailers are really effective in teaching. Um, Especially in language classrooms, teaching literacy, and uh, it's a really uh, great tool. Um, uh, and students throughout the course, how how else I engage students in active learning and collaboration? Um, students are required to keep up their blogs during the course, and they write their blogs. And one of the requirements to the blog is to uh, to give feedback to each other's posts. And uh, students uh, uh, during the uh, during the week they will be participating in the activities. And at the end of the week, the requirement was to post their reflections in the uh, in their blog, and uh, they. Uh, shared their blogs with each other on the discussion forum. Students to join each other's blogs and by students. Right now, I'm teaching uh, literacy and technology class, uh, and. Uh, students I think students are getting uh, almost I think yeah I stop I had to my froze it feels like it's froze yeah I stop I had to stop my video in order to come back. All right. Uh, so um, I noticed my my graduate students in my class, a literacy and technology class, they wrote that nobody of them used blogging before, uh, and it's um, amazing because uh, it's really a great tool for developing students' reflections, uh, reflective skill. I think the best teachers are usually reflectors. Um, back, uh, reflecting practitioners. Uh, so the um, these are all examples of of um, uh, students reflecting uh, reflections and 
they oh, write the, what they experienced during the class. At first they were scared to write, they didn't know how to write, and in the end, they all, they now they cannot, they keep their blogs after they uh, leave my class, but they keep even in their field when they start working, they use um, you use their blogs, and I provided examples of blogs in my uh, uh, in my um, links. So, um, and this is an example of some students in the beginning they don't know how to use different tools, but they develop the skills to the level that they can present at the conference. Last year in April, I, I did presentation for teachers in the class at the literacy conference um, to, uh, to teach about SMUD, how to use SMUDboard and Web 2.0. And one of my students from the undergraduate class was um, with me supporting it and assisting me. And at that, at that point, some, some teachers asked a question, and she went up to the board and she gave a little tutorial how to use Smartboard tool Vortex. It was amazing. It was I was so proud, and the student was happy to uh, to share. And this is one of my students uh, from far of four or five years ago, and now he came. He, he was. Uh, uh, an undergraduate student, and now he's in graduate school. And one of my last classes, he's now in my uh, class. And uh, I see a grown, grown, reflective uh, person. He is. Uh, he's now leading all the discussions on the dis uh, discussion forum, encouraging other students to not be afraid of change, to not be afraid of not knowing. And uh, his words. The, the insightful suggestions that he gives are really encouraging and really professional and very mature. And uh, this is a video of, uh, of uh, one of my students. And if we have time, I can share those videos. Um, so Kelly, she was, uh, that's what I do usually. In the end of the course, I ask students to share their um, reflections about the course, either in their blog, or write a letter to my other class, or a video uh, record their uh, greeting to my class, uh, sharing sharing what they yes sharing is caring, and uh, they all generously share their words of wisdom to other students. Do not be afraid of change. Do not be afraid of technology. Uh, if we survive, you will survive too. So. It was really very helpful and encouraging, and for me, it was really uh, in, enlightening and also inspiring to see that students uh, received and got their um, their experience in the class, and that they bring this and take them with the, with them to the field, to the professional field. And this is actually in my house. One of my online classes, we had a project that was happening online, but I decided to celebrate their learning in my house. And in the end of our uh, my reception, I baked Russian uh, pies and uh, shared Russian food. And then students were sharing uh, what they learned through the sem uh, semester and how they will uh, use this in their own um, classrooms, and these are a few um, moments of students. It was see, it was a couple of years ago. It was a project uh, I engaged students in collaboration with China, Japan, uh, Israel. Uh, there was there were people from Palestine even, uh, and uh, so we were interacting uh, about different topics um, and literacy topics, uh, social topics, uh, living in the city, uh, students were videotaping cultural topics exactly, and uh, students were videotaping their surroundings, they were proposing, 
uh, sharing proposals how to improve the environment. It was um, it was uh, absolutely wonderful. I didn't show yet, Nicola. I didn't show Nicola. I didn't share the video. If Nelly, do we have time? I will share. I just um, and this is this is um, this is a Skype uh, project that we I had with Russia, uh, my social studies class and the students from. Uh, International Institute of uh, International Relationships in Moscow uh, and students we were meeting once a week uh, using Skype and students were interacting with each other on again on cultural topics on social topics on uh, elections it was the year of election time and um, education American and Russian values it was a fascinating project and my students from this American class never had anything they were never exposed to Russian culture or Russian uh, topics and it was amazing to see how uh, friendship grew through the project and students learned about each other and about um, hardships about difficulties and about values about uh, Russian spirit uh, an American dream, so it was absolutely um, en uh, engaging and wonderful project for students to complete. So uh, last semester, my students were sharing big experience with the Beast World project, learning about uh, interaction, entrepreneurship, uh, how to become entrepreneurs in this uh, world of business, and how to create companies how to interact with each other when you are at work, uh, how to collaborate inter collaborate and cooperate. Um, so, and these are the results of the work that students, my students, future candidates did, and they engage students in creative projects. And students in the fifth grade uh, created videos, uh, movies, uh, and they were earning money uh, by completing different assignments and um, completing uh, their projects. Um, so, and uh, students, when they are engaged, they um, they then they are offered their um, their research. They continue in the research. They explore it more. So first, they were exposed to technology. Then they ex develop their skills and insights. Uh, what technology? What the role of technology is in teaching? And this is an example. Clarissa um, is were exploring last summer the topic of how teachers are using Web 2.0, and she was presenting uh, at its um, sure means summer undergraduate research experience. Students are given um, fifteen hundred uh, dollars uh, as a stipend for summer research, and my other student uh, was Lindsay. She was designing. She was exploring how teachers are using iPads. So this is and both students participated in last year uh, MOOC. Um, and Nelly, of course, remembers. Uh, how they were presenting, and but even more, uh, I would I'm proud to say that Lindsay uh, wrote a proposal for Ed Media Conference, and she will go with us, Nelly and me. We uh, together we submitted three proposals, and um, uh, Lindsay will be presenting in Finland her project, the results of her project, and now she's also. Um, in student teaching, and she designing lessons with iPads, and she will uh, share her results during the summer conference in Finland and uh, at the media conference. And of course, uh, students keep in touch using social network, not networking uh, sites, uh, Facebook, and this is one of my most um, talented students who was uh, not only in my classes and several of my classes. She was also president of 
uh, on a society in education where I'm a counselor and she engaged that technology in uh, even in our uh, chapter work and then she was she just was hired and uh, she got a job and she's very grateful for everything she gained and learned in the classes and that was one of the aspects that help her get a permanent job uh, in in her district. Um, so um, and uh, so this is uh, one of the my student from 2004 or six. Uh, she learned how to create uh, a little community of learners, and she said from day one. I impressed upon my students the value of each of us as individuals and strengths of our minds and skills collectively as a class. It takes a little more preparation and implementation in the beginning, but the rest of the year is brief. My colleagues are always amazed that it is actually works and that I have most no behavioral issues beyond November. Thank you for all your guidance and wisdom. My classroom teaching skills and my student learning experience are the better uh, for for you. So isn't it uh, inspiring? So you you do this, you you think you do it for your own uh, classroom, but it it gets this um, effect of snowball effect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nelly. That was uh, my um, presentation, and how much we have for for minutes. Um, let me see what I can share with you. What would you like to see? So I have examples of Tuxedo uh, project. One of the students, so all Vizify. Vizify. I I'm sure if you all of you have a Twitter, you can use Vizify to create a video about yourself. Or you can create your own um, resume, and it's a wonderful, um, a wonderful uh, tool. And you don't do anything; you just use your um, Twitter account, and everything that you have on your Twitter account becomes uh, almost like a resume or online uh, CV or online about me project. Uh, well, this link is available. Let me see. I will just uh, let me uh, copy it. I will copy it and, and I will bring it. I will bring it here, and you can look at this. Um, I just just uh, during this class, uh, just this last week, I used I used Padlet or a former wall wisher. And students, you can look at this project. Students were, they were reading, uh, they had readings to complete, and they were supposed to create, to create a wall um, with their insights about cooperative learning. I think it's really wonderful. Um, I collaborate with my students uh, during getting ready for classes. Uh, and you can see uh, this is one of the projects that my, one of my students is getting ready now. He's ready. Uh, he's designing a presentation about Vygotsky, and he shared his presentation with me, and I give him my uh, feedback and suggestions how to improve. Oh, this this would you would love. Um, last week, my students were learning about assessment authentic assessment how to uh, how to assess students authentically and they were also learning how to create a wonderful uh, a wonderful uh, how to create um, tests that will work not tests that uh, uh, tests that not only check students cognitive or memorization but they learn how to engage high level of thinking and instead of me giving them a, a multiple choice test on the topics. I ask students to create the the test to other, to test each other using the guidelines how to create good tests. So 
uh, and uh, I gave them tools. They were doing uh, using Google Google Survey, Google Form, but I also gave them tools, uh, which is called Kahoot. It's a fascinating game. And then we, when we did it in class, they said, "I I want this." Uh, for every class, I would do this because it's a, it's a very competitive Kahoot. It's called Kahoot, so you can use that. And Joknog, uh, Joknog, for example, is a is a, in another interesting site uh, that. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much for your feedback. Uh, so this is a a great uh, tool. It's it's. Um, it's really um, Jognog allows to create levels of tests, and in the end, it gives rewards. So it's really uh, students loved it too, and uh, I used also Socrative. So students are um, students do this and they share with each other, and um, that's what it makes it really powerful and. Uh, wonderful. So instead of me giving them lectures or multiple choice tasks and testing them to death, I engage them in creating things and sharing these things with each other. Much. I could listen to you all day. You realize that. I could listen to you all day. So, I mean, I kept extending so, um, the time uh, because I enjoyed it so much. I, I love listening yeah. and and especially yes. tuning into your enthusiasm. I love your enthusiasm for your students. I mean, that's what teachers are all about. They're all about watching their students grow and, and grow. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like watching your own children or, you know, your, your <laughs> grandchildren, you know, if you have grandchildren, it's like watching your children yeah, as, as they help. grow and, and, and they, you know, they, they become you know, such wonderful people, because it's really about uh, empowering and helping our students, no matter what age they are, it doesn't matter, they could be 90 years old for the, you know, but to, to change from what they were to something else. Yeah. It's not, it's not yeah. about the content. It's about people. And, and someone mentioned technology. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And technology only makes it easier no. to share Absolutely. with people around yeah, the world. Yeah. You know, it's not like technology is taking over. It's just helping us. So, thank you. <laughs> yes, what? <laughs> what did I write? No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know what I wrote. Yes. All right, I wanted to so say to that to everybody, Ludmilla, of course, um, is also part of this, uh, <laughs> the Moodle course. Thank there are two you. venues. One is My the Moodle pleasure. for beginners who have never been a Moodle teacher before. The other one is Moodle for non-beginners. And if you're doing the EVO, where Ludmilla is also facilitator, the Moodle for Teachers EVO for 2014, and by the way, this is uh, Ludmilla and I, our third year with this, you are a non-beginner. You're not a beginner anymore. So if you want to join the Moodle for Teacher, uh, the Moodle MOOC, and it's Moodle for beginners and Moodle for non-beginners, you're a non-beginner, and the uh, you'll get a certificate because everything is through the Moodle. The certificates are only through the Moodle, so you have to join and reflect, reflect either on the live classes or uh, in the recordings. And I suggest uh, Thomas is here; he's also a facilitator, and Ludmilla. I suggest that you copy the chat, everyone, so you can take it with me. Ludmilla, you mentioned that you couldn't really um, relate to a lot of things that were written there. So maybe you should also copy the chat, and then we can go back to uh, the Moodle MOOC 3 and the course feed so that we can um, continue. Because like Ludmilla says, it never ends. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so everybody, <laughs> I, I see there's a delay. <laughs> yeah, can you copy it, everyone? Just give me a thumbs up no. if you managed to copy, thumbs down if you didn't. I remind everybody how to and I'll do quit, the same uh, this to time save so the chat. Part of this. Okay, thumbs up, I copied. 
all right copy if not then i know thomas always does <laughs> so i'm grateful for that okay i see suhad suhad you're also everybody who's in the moodle for teachers evo is a non-beginner all right so uh <laughs> You don't get a certificate in the Evo course, but you, because we're not allowed to, Ludmilla, but you get a certificate in the Moodle MOOC 3. Okay, so that's where you can get your certificate for all the hard work. And everybody's working so hard. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ludmilla. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye. Um, I'm going to upload this to, um, to YouTube. Okay, without Thank anybody's you. name. So bye it's bye. just the PowerPoint and your voice. Thank Bella. you. Bye-bye.